She, well, that, 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 uh, that is the generator of big G. Because we're told that G is cyclic, right? Cyclic groups have generators. So let little g be the generator of big G, the group. So, and uh, the order of the group is M, and therefore the order of the element of little g, the, the generator, is also M, okay? Because, no. And by definition, if, it's, uh, if this is the generator, you raise it to its, the generator's order, which is M, you get e to the g. Now, if we can show that h to the m uh, gives e to the h, you know, the unit of, of this group, you know, if, uh, then what can we conclude? Well, um, that means that the order of this h is uh, the order of h, big H. And that means that this h is a generator. And that means uh, big H has a generator. And if it has a generator, by definition, it's cyclic. Okay, you follow that logic? Okay, okay so it boils down now to showing that H to the M is, in fact, this, right, to the unit of big H. So how, how can we do that? Uh, well, let's try something like this. So F to the G of M, it, it's, it's, simil it's similar to what we did uh, here. In fact, almost, almost the same. So, um, so now, g to the m, m is the order of g, and it's also the order of uh, the generator. So this is the same as e to the g. Okay. Now remember that theorem that the um, when, when you have two groups isomorphic, the unit element maps. Okay. So this is just e to the h. Right? So f of g to the m is e to the h. <coughs> now, uh, you can rewrite this as f to the g m times. And we did that uh, here, in the same, same sort of reason. Uh, how, by, 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 by using this kind of property. Right? Now, uh, f of g is what? f of g is h, right? oh yeah, let, let f of, let, yeah, let f of g be h. So h, h is uh, some element in big H, right? So, uh, so this just becomes h to the m. But this equals this, and this equals that. Therefore, this equals that. Right? And there it is. We've got it. Therefore, uh, this m is the order of this element, right? h. And m is also the size, well, not was the, the, the order of the group, big H. Okay? And that makes h a generator. Okay? And if group big H has a generator, little h, by definition, it's cyclic. Therefore, we have proved that H is cyclic. Right. Whew. Okay. Uh, so that was what thirteen. <coughs> uh, I think I'll skip fifteen. It's uh, doing it fine. It's fairly easy. All right. Now let's let's do some of the uh, the theorem thirty nine and the theorem forty stuff. Find, do we have room? Uh, maybe a bit here, a bit here. Uh, I'll be getting a new board very, very soon. Uh, so uh, that will help somewhat. Okay, uh, question 20. Find all the abelian groups of order 18. Order 18. Okay, so we know, we know, uh, you know it's an abelian group. Let's just say it's A. And its order, the order of the group, is 18. All right, so, um, uh, okay, so eight, 18, you can factor into, uh, so that's two, that's two by nine, right? And that's two by three by three. 
Now we can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. Okay, so you've got, you've got two forms. 18 is, is of these two forms. Now, can you remember from theorem 39, you, you take the order of your group. Now here it was 360, a bit more complicated. Here it's only 18. Okay, and you write out all possible expansions of your factors and factors to powers. So uh, you, you, here you only have two cases. So it's 2 by 3 squared, you know, 2 by 9. These are the factors. Or 2 by 3 by 3. Right? Now, uh, you know, this is just shorthand for this kind of thing. Right? This is what theorem 39 says. So uh, these, these two are, that's what 39, theorem 39 says. These two, in other words, you know, of this form, are not isomorphic, remember, for, from the, the theory part of uh, theorem 39. So this one and this one are not uh, isomorphic. So uh, and you can't you can't get anything like this, right? You can't you can't you can't find these factors. They, they, these are factors of the group because it's just two and three. Uh, so what can you do? Well, um, just just z to the 18 would, would be one. That would that would be um, because uh, you could just have 18 here and nothing. You know, just just one term and just have 18. That that would uh, that that group. You know, just z of 18. Where is it? Lost it here. Z of 18, that's isomorphic to, uh, to, to, you, to the group you're talking, whatever group it is you're talking about. Okay. Uh, and, oh, now look here. You can, you can factor these. That's 6, right? Uh, so Z2 direct product z3, z2 product z3, so uh, 2 and 3, 2 and 3 are uh, mutually prime, okay, relatively prime, so that is equal to z6. Now, um, so, so this is, uh, and, and you can swap these around, they, they commute, right? So, so this is the same as z3, Z6. Okay. Now three is a factor of six. That's of this form. So that'd be three. That's six. Now three does divide the next one. There's only two, uh, two of them, right? So uh, that means uh, uh, your group uh, is yeah, it's, it's, so Z3 times Z6. Okay. Here. So your group is isomorphic to that one by theorem 40. Okay, uh, so so you've got two, you got you'll have two categories of groups, non-isomorphic groups. One of them, they will be isomorphic to z of eighteen, and the other category, they will be isomorphic to uh, z three times z six. Uh, hope you followed that. Uh, I, so I've used I've used this, and I've used uh, theorem 39 and 40 together, and the last one. Uh, well, I'll leave it because it's much the same. I think I'll skip it. It was, it was going to be 22. Uh, find all abelian groups of order 180. Well, I'll, I'll give you a description without doing the details. So first thing is, um, you know, if you had here 180, uh, find all possible. Um, expansions. Okay. Now remember, uh, theorem 39 says, yeah, this is a shorthand for this, remember? So uh, you're talking a multiple um, direct product. And each of these, they are mutually non-isomorphic. They're all different. They're all distinct. Okay. Now, if you take each one and uh, try to put it in this form, if that works, then uh, your group will be isomorphic 
to to, to this form. And you know, what, what I was doing with, with these. Okay, I'll uh, stop there. Next uh, next lecture uh, promises to be even longer than this one, with even more parts. And it's on permutations, and uh, the length of the chapter is about 20 pages, which is double uh, the length of the usual chapters, which is usually around 10 pages, more or less. So uh, this next one on permutations, to, to permute just means really just change the order of. Like uh, you probably remember, know that the game of shuffle, like you have like uh, like one stone on a, on a table and you have three beakers turned upside down and you put you put the stone under one of the beakers and then you start shuffling the beakers and you have to guess where the stone is well when you shuffle those beakers each time you make it one shuffle in a sense uh, you're changing the order of those three beakers so um, each change of the order that's a permutation and uh, permutation groups are very important. Uh, they, they historically they're very important because uh, 19th century group theory was dominated by permutation groups. Uh, the, to, to 19th century pure mathematicians, group theory essentially was permutation groups. That's, that's uh, yeah, the, because that, 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 that that's all they knew of at the time. It was only in the 20th century that uh, the whole concept of groups became much more abstract and more comprehensive and broader and, and so on. So uh, permutation groups, uh, historically very important and uh, an important component of uh, finite group theory. So uh, see you again for chapter 12 on permutation, permutations, permutation groups chapter.